Hello friends, welcome to this second lecture on ALM. I am your professor Vinay Sangoli and today we will go ahead with the next learning algorithm which is alpha least mean square learning algorithm. So to move ahead from here, I would like to brief upon whatever we have done in our previous class. So in the previous class, we had studied something regarding your Pulsatron algorithm. So, to give you a small glance of Pulsatron algorithm, what all did we hear in your Pulsatron algorithm is, here in Pulsatron, the activation function was bipolar, that is either it was taking two values, that is 0 or 1, or it was minus 1 and plus 1. So, that means you are d of k and your s of k, where d of k is the output and s of k is the input would take two values 0 1 or minus 1 and plus 1. Now next thing your perceptron was applicable only to the linear separable problems. So therefore we came across an extension to our perceptron algorithm which is nothing but your pocket algorithm which we have seen in the previous video lecture. Now going forward the third important point which we saw in your perceptron was the neuron or the activation signal which we used was binary threshold. Therefore, we call the neuron as binary threshold neuron. Okay. So, in the moed, in your alpha, in your alpha least mean square learning algorithm, we will be changing our activation function. That is, we will be changing our activation function to the linear activation or it is also called as ramp activation function. But what was the activation function in your perceptron algorithm? It was nothing but your binary threshold activation function, which would look something like this. Here, I have considered it as a signum function, wherein it is arranging the value from plus 1 to minus 1. Now, how do you give the linear activation or how the activation happens in the linear activation procedure is defined with the help of a simple equation, which would be something like this. So, here you can see the activation is depending on your x transpose multiplied by your w of k, where x is your input pattern and w is the weight pattern. Okay. Now, how the error is measured? As you have seen in the previous algorithm, we were not concerned with measuring of error, but here in your alpha LMS algorithm, we will be concerned of measuring your error. So, therefore, the error measurement will be in the form of a linear error which is given by e of k is equal to d of k minus s of k where k are nothing but the iterations how many number of iterations we will be taking forward now that means here your e of k is the linear error d of k is the desired output and s of k is the neuronal signal so therefore we can say from our equation 1 which is your net activation and from our equation 2 which is your linear error we come across the final equation for linear error that is by substituting the value of s of k from equation 1 into equation 2 so therefore we get our equation 3 which is e of k is equal to d of k minus x transpose into w of k. So, this is very important. The linear error is very important because the whole LMS algorithm is depending on this linear error. Now, going forward, we will see another very important concept which is called as minimal disturbance principle. So, what is this minimal disturbance principle? Here, in the minimal disturbance principle, the whole neuron which we are using in the previous perceptron has been changed that is it has been changed to adaptive linear neuron. So therefore, we would like to see how this adaptive linear neuron looks like. So this is how your adaptive linear neuron looks. So if you observe here w naught is nothing but as usual it is the bias and your x1 of k, x2 of k and xn of k are nothing but the activation functions w1 of k, w2 of k, wn of k are nothing but the weight functions and your output is given by s of k which we have already seen in the previous equations. Now, 
as i said this whole thing is depending on minimal disturbance principle so this minimal disturbance principle we have already discussed in the theory classes but to move ahead or to give a small glance of what we discussed was the minimal disturbance principle states that we will be adding new information into the weight vector by making minimum changes to the past learning that is whatever the past learned weights are there that we will not touch upon that is we will try to minimize the variations in the past learned weights and will add new information that is the new vectors which will be coming will be taking the information from the new weight vectors to make you understand this i have taken the example of a classroom wherein we were trying to arrange the benches so if you consider that say for example the 50% of the class is already arranged then if i want the next 50% to be arranged then i will not make much changes to the already arranged 50% desks that is i will be taking i will be making minimal changes to the already arranged 50% desks so this is nothing but your minimal disturbance that is the disturbance would be very minimum to the already arranged weights so using this principle we will be coming across our next very important equation which is your recursive update equation so whenever any learning happens so remember remember friends we are speaking of supervised learning so till now our algorithms are based in our supervised learning so whenever we come across this learning algorithms the very important thing we need to see is how to update our weights that is how to move towards more accuracy therefore every time we go ahead and define your recursive update equations so to go go ahead the recursive update equation in your lms algorithm is given by omega k plus 1 is equal to omega k plus 1 you can call it or as usual we are calling it as what now w k of 1 as w why we are calling it as w to make it simple understandable w stands for weight so the recursive update equation that is equation number 4 is given something like this w of k plus 1 is equal to w of k plus eta e of k multiplied by x of k divided by mod of x of k the whole square now what actually is this update equation w of k plus 1 tells you that it is the next vector weight vector which is to be updated now how do you update this next weight vector it would be depending on the previous weight vector which is w of k plus the term the normalized term wherein we have our input x of k and your error function which is e of k then your eta which is nothing but your learning rate so very important friends here we have our eta here we have our input x of k one small thing which is addition in your lms algorithm is your e of k okay now what actually is this normalized input vector now to understand to understand this normalized input vector we would like to move ahead and try to understand some basics of your vectors that is how do you normalize a vector so this is something which is not there in the syllabus so that means it is very important to understand the normalized input vector and the assumption goes on usually like we know what is normalization but to some students it might be difficult to understand so therefore i have made one slide wherein i will be explaining about normalization of a vector so if you observe here let us consider v is the vector and its length or magnitude is given by mod of v something like this okay now what is normalization normalization is nothing but a process of making something normal or standard that is we will try to bring something which is not in a normal form to a normal form or you can say which is not in a standard form to a standard form like to give an example you can observe here i have an vector v which is of value 10 and it's it's pointing in a one of the directions and i have a standard vector which is 1 and 
now what is normalization i should convert this 10 into a standard vector that means here you can see the resultant wherein i have i have reduced your vector v into 1 that is the value 1 the black colored and it is also pointing in the same direction as dot as that of the standard vector so therefore you can observe here we have just reduced the magnitude but the direction remains the same now to go ahead when whenever we do such thing we come across a unit vector that is the resultant which is in black color is nothing but your unit vector which is given by v cap so therefore v cap is defined by the vector v divided by modulus of v so this is very important so the same thing so remember this equation here v cap is nothing but unit vector which is pointing in the same direction as that of your vector v and it is divided by the modulus of v so the same thing we have applied in your normalization you can observe here the same thing we have applied in your normalization that is x of k is the input vector which is divided by mod of x of k so therefore this becomes a normalized input vector so i hope friends what could be the next equation you can easily guess we would be trying to replace your x of k divided by mod of x of k with your unit vector which is what now x k cap so this equation is changed something like this so please try to compare this equation 5 which i am showing you right now with the previous slide equation which is equation number 4 so you can observe in the denominator side i had written in equation 4 x of k the whole square which i have split into two types that is eta of eta multiplied by e of k divided by mod of x of k and x of k divided by mod of x of k now if you observe here the next step i have just replaced your x x of k divided by mod of x of k with x k cap which is nothing but we have normalized your input vector so in the red color i have written here it is the normalized input vector now if you observe the other hand side what is this here we are scaling our error we say call it as scaled error that is nothing but eta multiplied by e of k divided by your x k mod so therefore this becomes finally eta k cap e of k is kept as it is and your x of k cap so you can compare the first line with the second line so this is very important equation equation number five here we are trying to find out your change in weight vector that is delta of w k okay so therefore what are my terms now you have a x k cap which is unit vector in the direction of x of k you have eta which is learning rate then that eta is further replaced by eta k cap which is pattern normalized learning rate that means if you observe this whole equation our x of k x k cap and eta k cap as well as e of k are all in the same direction they are all moving in the same direction 